In this video, we're going to learn how to count the positive, negative, and zero numbers in an array using C. So first we'll declare an int type array called array, which will initialize with the values 5, 0, negative 3, 56, negative 79, 100, 45, 3, 0, and negative 6. So this array has 10 elements total. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This is the length of the array. We'll store this number into an int type variable, which we declare called length. Now this array also has one, two, three, four, five positive numbers. It has one, two, three negative numbers, and it has two zeros. We want to count the number of positive, negative, and zero numbers in this array. Now each number in this array is stored at an index so for example, five here is stored at the index zero, zero is stored at the index one, negative three is stored at the index two, and so on for the rest of the numbers in this array. What we'll do is have a loop that's going to go over each index of this array using a counter variable. And we'll use that counter variable to examine each element in the array to determine if it's a positive number or a negative number or zero. So we'll create the for loop here. We'll have a for loop, and what we'll do is initialize a counter variable i equal to zero. So this counter variable is going to begin at the first index in the array here, zero. And in the first loop iteration, we'll look at five to see if five is a positive number or a negative number or zero. Then in the next loop iteration, we'll increment i by one so that i will now be here. And then we'll examine this number and so on for each number in the array. So with each loop iteration, we're going to increment i by one. So that way we look at the next number in the array each time. Now, eventually we do want this loop to stop. We're going to stop this loop once i is no longer less than the length of the array, because that will tell us that i has gone past the end of the array and we can stop. So we'll have here, i is less than length for the loop condition. So this loop is going to continue so long as i is less than the length of the array. Then in the loop body, we use an if, else if, else statement to examine each number and categorize it as positive, negative, or zero. Now, as we categorize each number, we're going to increment a running count of the number of positive, negative, or zero numbers. We'll declare three variables for these running counts. We'll have int positive count for the running count of positive numbers, which we're going to initialize to zero. Because before we've examined any numbers in the array, we haven't identified any positive numbers yet. We'll also declare similar variables for the negative count and zero count. So we'll have int negative count is equal to zero, and we'll have int zero count is equal to zero. Then in the loop body, we'll check to see if the element at the index i is positive, negative, or zero. So we'll have if the element in the array at the index i is greater than zero. This tells us that the element that we're currently examining is a positive number. In that case, we're going to increment positive count by one to acknowledge that we have found another positive number. So we'll have positive count plus plus to increment that number by one. Then if this is not the case, we we'll use an else if branch to check if the number at the index i is less than zero, because if this is true, this tells us the number that we're currently examining is a negative number. And in that case, we're going to increment negative count by one. So we'll have negative count plus plus. Otherwise, the only other possibility is that the number is a zero number. So we'll have here in the else branch, zero count plus plus. So when this loop body first runs, i is going to be at the index zero, the index of the first element in the array. And we'll check to see if this element is greater than zero. It is because five is greater than zero. So we'll increment positive count by one and positive count will now be one. Then in the next loop iteration, i is going to be here at the index one and we'll check to see if zero is greater than zero. It's not. So then this else of condition is going to be evaluated and we'll check to see if zero is less than zero. It's not. So then this else branch is going to execute and we'll increment zero count by one and zero count is now going to be one. Then i is going to be here in the next loop iteration, and we'll check to see if negative three is greater than zero. It's not. So then this else of condition is going to be evaluated, and we'll check to see if negative three is less than zero. 
It is, so we're going to increment negative count by one, and negative count is now going to be one. Then in the next loop iteration, i is going to be here at the index three. We'll check to see if 56 is greater than zero. It is, so we're going to increment positive count by one, and positive count is now going to be two. And so you can see how this is going to proceed. By the time this loop is done, we'll have counted all the positive, negative, and zero numbers in the array. The last thing to do is to output the results. So down here, we'll call printf. We'll have printf, and we'll have here positive count, colon, followed by percent %d to output an integer, followed by backslash n for a new line, and we'll output the positive count here. Then we'll do the same thing for the negative count and zero count. So we'll have printf with negative count, percent %d, backslash n, and negative count, and then we'll have printf with zero count, and we'll have percent %d, and backslash n, and we'll have zero count. So now, if we save compile and run the program, we'll get a positive count of five, a negative count of three, and a zero count of two, which is correct. So this is how we can count the positive, negative, and zero numbers in an array using C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.